welcome to Janelle talks extensively about her OCs for a few minutes at 4.30 in the morning, because she can. Uh, to start off, this is obviously a speed fan of my OC, Prima. I love her, she's my baby, and so I will rant about her for the next couple of minutes. Um, it's also scripted, because lord knows I cannot talk without one. Um, so, Prima is one of my older OCs, if not the first, and she's definitely grown on me since I first created her, but this isn't OC history, so we're not going to talk about who she used to be, we're talking about who she is. Uh, Prima's real name is Eileen, but she hates it, and only a handful of people get to call her that. Her mom is not one of those people. Um, so if you don't know, I have a book series. In this series, Prima features as a character in the second book, and technically the third book, uh, but in this universe there are gifts and curses. Uh, gifts are good superpowers, and curses are burdens. I don't really know what else to tell you. They're burdens. Given by the gods when you're ten, to sum it up. Um, anyway. Prima turns 10, she gets this really powerful gift that takes too long to explain, so I just won't. Um, and she has a family curse to live on naturally long, but she's also cursed so that her legs are really weak, so she has to use a cane to walk. It's funny, because I wrote this part before I ended up having to use a cane to walk, so isn't that ironic? Um, her half hit split hair is an extreme case of poliosis, I believe it's called. I, I wrote this script literally 30 seconds ago, like 30 minutes ago, so... I don't quite know if it seems right because I didn't go, go to double check. Her eyes are do-it-all binism, which since she's like Jeff Bezos rich, she has her eyesight fixed up quite a bit, but uh, still needs glasses 90% of the time. Um, she's still sensitive to light and the sun and all those things, but uh, yeah, she can see with her glasses, so that's nice. Moving on, by 4th grade, she and her best friend Damien realize they're both gay, and during middle school she enters this emo phase, but it's done by time high school rolls around. During high school, she's the student council president, which, um, pretty neat. Um, of course, uh, a lot of stuff goes down in high school, but most of it is for, uh, Prima helping Damien overcome his struggles. She doesn't really have any struggles of her own, she's doing pretty good. Uh, Prima is, of course, the number one Pearl simp, and they start dating in high school, and by the end of high school, Prima proposes because they've known each other since kindergarten. Um, okay. About a year into college, Damien and Prima get into a big fight and stop being friends for a while, which is a huge deal, because Damien and Prima have been besties since they were born. Uh, but to be fair, Damien's not really friends with anyone during this time period, so they make up and stuff, of course, but Prima's lonely while they're not friends. Uh, we cut to the future sometime, and Prima and Pearl have their wedding. Um, it's lovely, and Prima actually sheds a tear, which is rare. A very rare, single tear. It's very nice. Um, Prima by now is becoming quite the political figure, and her plans to take over all Hexaria and rule as queen like some evil supervillain are going surprisingly well. Uh, on her quest to become queen, though, she runs across her mother, mother? mother and s snaps. Uh, she just full-on murders her mom, and then when she comes back to herself, she's like, What the fuck did I do? Uh, and then she freaks out and calls Damien, and naturally, as her best friend, Damien helps her hide the body, along with Janet, which is Prima's aunt, who helps them out, since Janet's well-versed in murder. Um, after a few talks with Janet and some much-needed love and care from her wife, Prima moves on from murder <laughs> and becomes Queen of Victoria through some less-than-legal means. Uh, she gets help from Janet, naturally. Obviously. Clearly. Like, it's, it's impossible to not have help from Janet. Janet is the best. Um, she and Pearl talk about having kids, and eventually they do get a surrogate, and Prima gets pregnant, hides her pregnancy from everyone but Pearl and Damien, and then has Valley. I could go on about Valley, but this is Prima's video, so, moving on. Pearl has the next kid since, uh, it's, it's Narfi, and since Narfi isn't blood-related to Prima, he doesn't get the pseudo-mortality curse when he turns 10, but Valley does. Uh, everything's nice and happy for a few years, and then Pearl just up and dies. Uh, as for how? I'm rewriting that, okay? So, we're just gonna, just, just know she dies. Okay? Maybe cancer or something, I, I don't know. So, obviously, uh, Prima is devastated because she's just lost her wife, but she stays strong because she has to raise the kids on her own and help them through their grief. But, then that doesn't matter much since Murphy dies at, uh, 15. Yeah. It might be 16, or 12, but he, he dies in his teens. He does not make it to 18, I can tell you that. Um, for, and he dies from a curse that was given to him when he turned 10, by the gods. And something in Prima really breaks when uh, Narfi dies, because it makes her this very overbearing and overprotective mother to Valley, because she's only got one son left, 
and she's got no wife left either, so. Um, she also becomes colder because she doesn't want to be hurt, so that's how she's rationalizing it anyway. She's like, haha, I'm being cold and distant to my only son because, uh, wife dead and son dead, so now I never get hurt. I be cold. Uh, and she never remarries, so that's sad. Uh, but I think it's for the best she never remarries, honestly. Um, Kato and Valley's 18, the gods visit her and, like, are like, oh, wow, your life's so long and crazy. Wanna be a god? You'll be the god of chaos. And Grima says yes, because she's power-hungry girl boss, obviously. So now when she dies, she's destined to descend to the ranks of an archfiend, which is basically a bad god, if you don't know, which you wouldn't, because I've never explained the lore of my stuff. Anyway, um... So, she's gonna become the Archfiend of Chaos. She doesn't really tell anyone this because she doesn't see the need to. It's like, whatever. Like, it's gonna happen when she dies anyway. It's not like it's happening when she's living. Uh, okay. Where am I in my script? Uh. Okay, then Valley's like 23 and she kicks him out because they get into a fight. Uh, now she's alone in her big empty man mansion, reminiscing on when there was a family inhabiting the house, you know? Uh, she's still queen, with Damien as her secret advisor, because how could he not be her advisor? He, they're best friends, they're besties. He's not an advisor legally, but still. And does anyone know Damien's a secret advisor? No one but Janet, obviously. Uh, that's why he's secret. Anyway. Uh, a few years later, Valley and Prima make up and begin bonding more than ever, which is delightful. Um, Prima at some points calls Janet mom, and Janet for once doesn't mind, because Janet's husband has revived, so she couldn't give a shit. Um, Valley gets married, Primo becomes a grandma, things like that continue for a few years, and eventually her friends start dying. One by one, they go down, and Prima and her blood-related family can only sit and watch as Primo becomes more and more alone, as everyone she befriended has ever has come to, like, their natural lifespans end. It'll be a couple hundred years before she herself dies, but she even then spends over a hundred of her years mourning the loss of her dearest friends, especially Damien, Winston, and Pearl, even though she's been dead the longest out of all the, f the main, like, four. Uh, so, Janet's the only one who come, who has come before her, who lives and outlives Prima, because Janet has a mutation of the family curse, but this isn't about Janet. So, uh, once, uh, Prima, uh, once Prima finally dies, she's surrounded by her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, uh, and her great, you get the point. Uh, she dies with her aunt by her side as well, a reminder of her past. Uh, she descends to the ranks of arch fiends and comes back as a chaos. Uh, Archfiend, and she's youthful and in her prime once more. Gods aren't supposed to meddle deeply in human lives, but since she's chaos, um, she doesn't need to listen to the rules at all that much. So she comes right back to her family and living life, and she's just a bit, and by a bit I mean a lot, more powerful and omnipotent. So she's not allowed to rule Hexaria anymore though, because the gods, the big gods, the big, big, big ones, the big head honchos were like, uh, that's not fair, don't do that. And so. She passes the crown to one of her grandchildren because Valley doesn't want to rule. He's made that very clear. Um, there's some more shit that happens, but I'm probably running out of time, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you for listening to me ramble at oh my god, how is it almost five? Um, and thanks for listening to me ramble. Yeah.